Hello everyone, Robert here, and I'm going to talk to you guys about uh, keeping yourself safe online. The main reason I want to talk to you guys about this is because there's something that just came up in the news not too long ago, and it's happening now. And before I get into that, I want to talk to you guys first about what online security and safety is, because, as you know, most of the average consumers, whether it be in the United States or other countries, they're unaware of what actually goes on, because a lot of these... Uh, cyber attacks, these uh, little things that happen, they usually think those are only for big businesses, people that have money. They don't think it happens to individuals. But in fact, these things are happening a lot more often to the basically average consumer, but they don't know because they're not very tech savvy. So I want to tell you from my side of view, since I'm a very tech savvy person, give you guys sort of a heads up what to watch for, what to look for, and then also I'm going to tell you about what the most current problem or recent attack is going on now. So let's start off first in the beginning. Let's go with the consumer, which is basically most of you guys watching this, not all, and the tech savvy person, someone like me that's out there. First thing, let's explain what the differences are. The consumer, the average consumer, they usually watch the news, read articles, listen to commercials, uh, listen to the employee at the store. And usually believe them. Take take their word. They say, okay, well, this is how this tech works. This is what the news is saying and so forth. And then they usually get their product, uh, spend a lot of money or more money than they needed to, spend money on um, technical support or calling tech support, you know, when they set it up. And then the only time they really ever talk to a tech savvy person like me is when they actually need a problem or something's not working because they can't figure it out themselves. Now, the tech savvy person, someone like me, usually we research the products or the items, whatever it is, software, ahead of time. So once we research it, we know, ahead of, we know what's the better buy, what's the better product, and so forth. Then we know we wanna buy, we go to the store, we don't ask the employee anything, we don't go and talk to their tech support, we go and get the product we need. We have any issues on the product, product goes wrong or bad or anything happens, we do the research, we find the information, or we know how to fix it ourselves. We don't need any extra help. But also, being a tech savvy person means we can spot the fraudulent red flags and errors that are happening through emails, through messages, and so forth. The average consumer usually cannot spot these. They believe them as truth because they're used to reading it somewhere, seeing it somewhere, and then just going with it that's what they know. So that's basically what the difference is. Now for my case, being a tech savvy person, none of my friends or family will ever come up to me and ask me tech questions just on the whim. It's only when one of their tech products or technology items doesn't go the way they want it to go. Then they ask me a question. Instead of letting me teach them ahead of time or informing them ahead of time, I usually don't get that. The only tech people that, that talk to me about things are other tech savvy people. That's it. So I want to let you guys know who are following this channel or following my blogs. Remember, I got two blogs, one that deals with tech, apps, and so forth. The other one deals with reviews, businesses, products, and so forth. If you're following me on those three areas, then you're going to be more well-informed than the average consumer, whether it be in the United States or other countries. And that's what I want to let you guys, you guys know about. So what I want to talk to you guys about first is a phishing scheme that's going on now. And I'm going to go ahead and read to you what phishing is. Phishing basically is the fraudulent practice of sending emails purporting to be from reputable companies in order to induce individuals to reveal personal information such as passwords and online credit card information and so forth. That is a phishing scheme. There's a current phishing scheme going on now affecting the iMessages. Now iMessage deals with Apple's products only. This can also affect your other text messaging services, whether you're on Android or other systems. This has been happening through emails for a long time. Well, this one currently uh, sends you a text message telling you that your phone ID is about to expire and you need to update your information. And they give you a little link to click on. Well, there's basically two red flags there. For one, phone ID. None of your Apple products are going to have phone ID. Nothing. None of your Android's going to have phone ID. None of your stuff's going to have phone ID. That is your first red flag. The average consumer doesn't know that. They see phone, ID, they put it together, they think that's the truth. Second red flag. 
they're using a shortened link. What a shortened link is, is you normally have a long URL link, HTTP and so forth. Well, you can shorten those links into bit.ly links, BTLYs, um, smart URLs, uh, buffer URLs, whatever you want. You can shorten those links. And what that does is that sort of um, makes it more compact, but it also hides the IP address sometimes. So you usually don't know what IP it came from. And remember, the IP address is usually the location of the computer or system where that link is directed from. And this one uses a shortened link. So that's second red flag. Third is usually uh, a message comes in that is not from one of your contacts because the only messages you should ever be actually answering on your phone should be your contacts. You can, you can protect yourself by putting your contacts under a VIP section in your phone's uh, contact section and you can also do it in your settings as well and say these are the only VIPs I want to accept. Anything else, put in the... Uh, spam folder or spam section of your messages. So that is that is the thing. If you guys run into that text, you can uh, take a screenshot of it. You can, I'm going to leave you a link to the article below so you guys can, can go to the article. There's a 1-800 number to call and there's also a way you can send it to your carrier. So that's the way you can protect yourself if you get that link. If not, I want to let you guys know, hey, I'm here for whether it be YouTube, whether it be my blogs, to help you guys out and assist you on any of your tech issues that you have. And I also do geeky stuff as well. That's why I have that within my, my profile. So I can help you guys out. I can be your tech provider, your tech knowledge person to help you out with anything prior to having an issue or prior to having a problem. Just go ahead and let me, leave me comments here. Go to my blogs. Give me your email. I can send you information and so forth. All right. So that is the warning I want to give you guys today. Be careful out there. Be safe online. And if you have any questions, any comments, go ahead and leave them here. I will talk to you guys later with more.